guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing mode three, right? And I, I know that the two that I've been able to do so far has been able to help in one way or the other. I will also try as much as possible as I can to be able to do the module 4 before the end of the week but I can't really say when the video will be out because I decide not to be making promises again because when I make promises it's never light will decide to do their own right so but one thing I know is that before the, run, the week runs out I'll definitely come up with the module 4 so I want to I want in a situation whereby I can be able to cover the eight models in one month, which is in four weeks. So I'm trying my best, and I know I will tell you because I've already promised, right? So without much to say, module three: leadership and business growth strategy. I've not gone through this module because I have had a lot of things going on with me and I've been very busy so I will be reviewing this and probably coming across it for the first time on this particular topic but I hope it's something that I've been able to cover in my current program right so that is cool the concept of personal leadership what is a personal leadership Looking at personal leadership, you can explain it as the ability to develop and utilize a positive leadership trait to guide the direction of your life instead of letting time and chance determine the, your course. Personal leadership can begin when you decide to be your own life coach and live by your personal mission statement that reflect your value and goal. If you're looking to enhance your leadership capacity, one important, one important strategy for guiding your growth is to create a personal leadership development plan. This type of plan can help you grow your current role and also prepare you to take the additional leadership responsibilities in a new role. Personal leadership value, okay, this is the core values of a personal um, leader, value, encouragement, vision, empowerment. I hope they talked about it one after the other. Linking leader leadership to entrepreneurship. Today, having a leadership or entrepreneurship qualities by business managers is not enough for success of any enterprise. Managers need to have both leadership and entrepreneurship qualities in order to be successful. At this point, the concept of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial leadership emerges. Entrepreneurial leadership is a new and modern type of leadership that is a combination of leadership qualities and spirit and soft skills of entrepreneurship. In addition, entrepreneurial leadership is creating new product, new process and expansion of opportunities in existing businesses, working in social institution and dealing with ignored social issues. Entrepreneurial leadership is a new and modern type of leadership that is a combination of leadership qualities and spirit and soft skill of entrepreneurship. In, in addition, entrepreneurial leadership is creating new products, new process, and expansion of opportunities in existing businesses, working in social institutes and dealing with ignored social issues, participating in social and political movement, contributing to the change of current services and policies implemented by civil society, societal, society organization, and government. In recent time, entrepreneurial leadership has become a new phenomenon in business management that needs to be extensively discussed in this regard. The importance of an entrepreneurial leadership is to emphasize 
The importance of entrepreneurial leadership is emphasized by examining the concept of entrepreneurial leadership in all ramifications. Thus, entrepreneurial leadership is defined as affecting and, and directing the performance of employees towards the achievement of organizational objectives that involve recognizing and exploiting entrepreneurial opportunities. So it's trying to tell you that as, as an entrepreneur, you also need to have to acquire some special skills as a person. Like you have to make contributions, you have to make contributions and your personal, personal traits should include values. You should be a man or woman of value. You should be um, a person with a spirit of encouragement. Because definitely for your team to be able to actually grow and function well, you need to be able to have um, the spirit of encouraging them at every stage that they go. Yes, there is a way you tell somebody you're not doing too well, but say it in a way that motivates this person to want to do more. Yeah. Then vision. What is your vision as a leader? Because for you to be an, an entrepreneur and do well and be successful, you have to have leadership skills. That is what, in a nutshell, that is what they are trying to tell you. And you also have to, um, that you should be able to empower yourself in every angle, which means you need to educate yourself in every aspect. So for you to be a, to be very successful in running a business, you need to have a leadership goal. Like you need to have a leadership skills. You need to have a, a leadership talent. Because I mean, how can you really you have to be a leader over the people that is going to be working with you. You have to be able to be in charge. So that's why they are mentioning that in this um, last paragraph of this leadership, it says that it's a combination of leadership qualities and spirit and soft skills. So you need the quality of a leader and skills of an entrepreneur to be able to succeed and be successful. So you need to have, um, in addition, Entrepreneurial leadership is creating new products. You should be innovative. You should be able to think out of the box at every time, right? Yeah, because you're definitely going to be competing with people in the marketplace. So you want to be able to be at the top of the chart. You want to have um, um, a competitive advantage against and have a competitive edge against your competitors, right? So. In process and expansion of opportunity in existing businesses, you need to be open to opportunity. Working in social institutes, so you should be versatile and be able to know. I know there are people that are doing business, you don't even know what is happening in the society because you're just focused in your business. You need to be versatile, you need to be open minded as because you're a leader, not just a business owner or yes, a company owner. But in the political movement, Contributing to the change of current services. So there is something going on. Let me take for instance. Um, the, let me take for those in Nigeria. You already know, of, of course, a lot of people heard about it. During answers, a lot of companies, some even go went as well as giving their their staff off days so that they could actually participate in answers pro protests. So went ahead as so like some companies were supplying drinks. Is a marketing strategy number one. Number two, they are actually involved in what is going on. Because apart from being handling a business, then they are also they are also leaders, right? Entrepreneurship leadership is defined as affecting and directing the performance of employees towards the achievement of organizational achievements, organizational objective that involve recognizing and exploiting entrepreneurial opportunity so when you actually be a good leader to your workers to your, to your employees they, you actually bring out the best in them i mean there is a difference between when you're being um you're being too kind of course you can actually be too kind but there should be every put a touch of professionalism in whatever thing you do so no matter how close and kind you want to be with your workers let it be in a professional way Right, so that they don't abuse it and or take it for granted. Importance of, of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial leadership. Importance of entrepreneurial 
leadership cannot be overemphasized since entrepreneurial leadership is an important factor affecting the performances of the company. Leaders of companies and especially leaders of small scale family companies should have and use the qualities of entrepreneurial leadership in order to continue their lives, compete with their competitors and develop themselves to be able to run successful business. I've already pointed out a little of this before. I think, mean, like I said, I've not already gone through this because I've had a very busy week and I'm trying to, I'm running behind time, so I had to cover up. For example, it not only that he, that he teams up as a soccer player, he is the person who plays in the field with the team as captain. Not only as an administrator who decides, gives instruction, check their workers, but also they are entrepreneurial leaders who are captioned in the team and showing the way to success. So in this place, you're, you lead by example. You don't just go telling, do this, do this. You do, the, do it for them to, for them to actually see that it's possible, right? You participate in things that you tell them to do. You get involved. You don't have to, and they say leaders are actually, your, your responsibility is actually to serve. So if you need to be a leader to somebody, me, you being a leader is that you have followers. So let your employees and the people you associate with, let them be your followers, following your footsteps. Right, so it's quite very important that you lead by example. That is what they are saying, right? To ensure continuous business success, entrepreneur personal leadership development plan is extremely important for business sustainability, given the dynamic nature of the business environment. This plan must include core skills to master experience gap to close to master, experience gaps to close, new relationship to build, specific tasks to delegate, key action items to complete. Leaders are assessed not only on their own success, but also on the success of their team. Your personal leadership development plan should list the critical indicators of success for leaders and their team, which include but I'm not limited to the following. Improving the quality of work, improving teamwork and moral, increasing delegation of responsibility, strategic planning and preparation, continuous learning for you and your team. So in this place, um, everyone has some few things. I mean, when you have um, these workers, let me take for instance, I don't know, I believe no, no, nobody from my, my department is watching this actually. When you, so because I, I'm about using my my department in my church as an example. So um, my leader dedicated this um, particular sister that is a very good friend of mine to this particular sector in our department. So when she got there, she found that the leader preferred doing everything by himself. So she actually felt worthless. At the end of the day, she had to join another team, another sector. I'm using sector because I'm thinking about business. So she joined another team in our department and she's very functional there. Right? So at the end of the day, when she was asked, she was like, okay, so the guy does everything by himself. But this other person, she's working more like the person's assistant. When the person is not around, she's the one that is actually in charge. So she has responsibilities, even when the guy is there and when the guy is not there, because he delegates responsibilities to her. So when you delegate responsibility to people, it makes them feel that, okay, I am important and my, and my skills and value are actually safe. So this person trusts me enough to actually allow me to handle this. And you're helping them grow as a person too. You're helping them get experience. So, you need to learn the act of delegation. Yeah, I had to actually jump some of them to get to that because it's very key. Delegation matters. You, they, are, they say that um, that a leader, as a leader, is not everything you, you need to do by yourself. Some things you need to delegate them. Things you know that other people can actually do. You delegate those things, but things you know that other persons cannot do 
so that you, when you delegate these ones, you can be able to focus on the things every other person cannot do, but just you can do it. Right? So, improving on your quality of work because, yes, when you work with your team, you bring strong together, you have to leave that place that your high place. Of course, we know that you're up there, but when you want to relate with them, relate with them like because everybody's idea matters, everybody's value matters. Right, your contribution can change the whole thing. If I remember vividly last time when we were doing um TEO way, that's Tony Elumelu, Tony Nyemichi Elumelu way, they mentioned something about um, of course, you've know their app that the idea of having um, a like a robot respond to you when you use your mobile and like, hi, I think I can remember the Dobzine, sorry. UBA, if I really don't remember, things in it on his um, is this the um, via or something? And that is a lady, that of UBA. So they said it was actually Kony so, um, daughter that came up with that idea. And the UBA as a company is running with it. So everybody's idea matters. So as a leader, these are things you need to really consider and put into consideration. Sometimes you bring yourself down because one person might have an idea that might turn your business. I might give you a competitive edge in, uh, against your competitors, right? Somebody can come up with an eye, a perfect and excellent idea that can change the whole thing for you. So that's why brainstorming and coming to the level of your workers sometimes to relate with them really matters. Even if you don't want to take the suggestion they are going to be giving you, make it look like what they are actually saying matters. Because if you shut somebody down when the person wants to make contribution, you're mentally telling the person that your ideas are not needed. Number one, the person will not want to contribute, make contributions next time. Even if the person has a great idea, the person will not share it with you because one, the person will feel like a failure. Maybe he's not able to think about ideas that can actually make a difference. And number two, the person feels that you don't believe in them. That's it. So improving teamwork and morals. Of course, when you relate to them, have meeting with them, even if it's once a week, make them feel at home the first employee i actually had when in one of my my friend i still relate with her today because i literally make her feel very comfortable as she relates to me most of the things of course she knows her boundaries and she respects that right but i made her feel so comfortable that she takes my business as her own if not that yeah she had to relocate because her mom actually asked her to come and that was why she had to leave. And I'm still in communication with her till today. Sometimes I still call her on the phone. So having a good relationship means that they are going to take your business as their own. You make them feel that, okay, they are part of this thing. They are part of their contribution actually matters. I'm actually taking so much time to talk about this too. The increasing delegation of responsibilities after the bad. Strategic planning and preparation. So come together and plan your next the, the the next thing you need to execute and strategize. You might not know, but one of the things they are going to tell you might actually make a difference. Like continue learning for you and your team. Sometimes I have similar. I know there is um this person I worked for some years back. Of course, sometimes she just comes to the office. She puts in a um. A YouTube video on a motivation and training and make sure that all of us listen to it she did personally call people to train us from time to time so do that as you might say after training them they will disappear and all that despite what you've made an impact in their life and it's just what makes you a leader all right team leadership skill a team leader is someone who provides guidance instruction direction and leadership to a group of individuals, the team, to achieve a key result and or group of alleged results. When a team leader motivates a team, group members can function in a goal-oriented manner. I've already explained that. The chief purpose of the leadership team is to bring together senior leaders of diverse functions to solve shared problems and ensure alleged action and collective responsibilities for the organizational performance. The team leadership responsibilities 
coach team members, develop team strengths and improve weaknesses, identify team goals and evaluate team process and evaluate team progress, resolve conflict, organize team initiatives, attention to results, accountability, commitment, constructive conflict and trust. Of course, when you work as a team, okay, this is the five full, I think this might be important by you because it might come out in your piece. I know, I don't know, but maybe, just maybe. Five ways high performing, five ways high performing team. Attention to results because that is where they are aiming at the result. Then they are accountable. Then they are committed because when you work with them like that, you make them, they are actually committed to the goal and to the responsibilities given to them. In collective conflict, they resolve that collectively. They trust. Analysis of a top leadership skills. As a leader, you can't force people to work harder. To be effective, you can only allege your team's efforts and work smarter and, and together. The qualities of an effective team leader can be broken into the following. In addition to the example, in the above chart. Be committed. Take time with your employees. Be productive. Encourage debate but keep them productive. Be analytical. Test your ideas. Are they contest or have you hired a head of shifts? Yeah, when you have um, a test of idea that's why you allow it so that you actually know and you might never can tell idea that might be coming out from somebody that you never even thought can actually give you that kind of idea right be respectful respect time and privacy you don't always have to impose things on people especially when it's not their working hours if you want them to help you do something acknowledge the fact that it is not their working hour and try as much as possible not to actually cross your limit of course you're, you're, you're not their lord and master right so there are things you might want to ask them you ask in a respective way because you are a leader and they are supposed to follow your step step and learn from you communicate clearly let everything you tell them and responsibilities you give them let it be clear communicate don't just just the way you say communicate clearly Dedicate clearly, but do not micromanage. Be creative and don't let everyday tasks kill it for your team. Be decisive and kill off any procrastination. Make decisions and keep procrastinations. Be trustworthy and build trust within your team. Of course, if you're trustworthy, you'll be encouraging trust trust in your team. But if you're not somebody that cannot be counted on, not somebody that cannot be trusted, we already know how the whole thing is going to end. Power, skill, motivation, responsibility, teamwork, communication, competence, support. Let's see what that is. Okay, so that's analysis. Feedback mechanism. Feedback mechanism and its positive impact in leadership. A feedback loop is essentially a recurring loop to analyze the quality of work that is being done and to uncover the solution to challenge in order to continue to improve. It should not be viewed as negative reinforcement as part of the loop. As part of the loop, is the positive action that are being performed. Leadership feedback is a self-sustaining process, meaning that it is designed with everyone, everything needed for productivity. A positive, a, a positive to enhance the goal and provide solution to recycle, to recite for the areas needed to be improved. When it comes to performance, and our action how do we know what and what is not effective simple feedback 
Simple feedback. Highly effective feedback is critical for maintaining a capable workforce. A main competence, a main competence of the feedback process is acquiring accurate information to fuel feedback decision, which enhances validity validity of the feedback. There are three main sources of feedback in business. Each source of feedback can provide a different perspective on performance and can be a valuable competent of the feedback process. Customers. Customers, objective idea. Supervisors, managers, team leaders, peers, subordinates. So it's actually good that you encourage feedbacks in your business. Always encourage feedbacks. It's, it's very, very important because it helps you find out where you are actually doing well so that you can keep doing that and improving. And it helps you find out where you are not doing not too well, right? So that you can actually work on it. So always encourage feedback, even from your, from most especially from your customers, right? It's quite important you encourage it. Then from your, from your people that you've put in position from, let's say your managers, right? And your team leaders, then your peers and your subordinate. Your subordinate here means your employees, right? Encourage feedback. Understanding strategic formulation and implementation. Formulation and strategic implementation are the two most important phases of strategic management process. Strategic formulation means crafting a combination of strategies and picking out the best one to achieve the organizational goal and objective and thereby reaching the vision of the organization. It involves several steps which are performed in chronological order. In the other hand, strategy implementation refers to the execution of the ultimated, ultimate strategy. That is, it converts the chosen strategy into action for the realization of organizational goal and objective. But there exists a fine line of differences between strategy formulation and strategy implementation, which will be further explained in this lecture. But before we look at the difference, let us examine the following main steps in implementing a strategy. Developing an organization having potential of carrying out strategy success. 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 Developing an organizational developing an organization having potential of carrying out strategy strategy successfully. Disbursement of abundant resource to strategy essential activities. Creating strategy encourage encouraging policy. Employing best policies and program for constant improvement. Linking reward structure to accomplishment of results, making use of strategic leadership. Now, like they said, the following are main step of implementing a strategy, right? So you're developing an organization, having potential of carrying out strategy successfully. So when you work with your team and you're building your team, yes, you should be able to know if they can successfully carry out um, strategy successfully. So that's you're developing an organization, a team, like having a team, having potential. So they are, they are have all of their potentials is to be able to carry out strategy successfully. Then disbursement of abundant resources. So if there is anything they actually need to be able to accomplish this, this is where many companies fall short. They want to achieve a goal and they've set out a strategy to achieve it, but then to disburse the necessary resources for that to actually be achieved is something that many of them will not. They will prefer bringing it small, small, and maybe trying to tell you that you should sort it out, which at the end of the day turns out to backfire at them. Creating strategy encouragement policy. So, if you're in your company, you tell them that if you come up with this strategy and it's successful at the end of the day, 
this is what you're going to gain. I know some companies have already been doing that where they say if you surpass your target, you get a bonus or so, 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 so. So it helps people want to actually do better and do more, right? In employing the best policy and program for constant improvement. So one of the things you can actually do in this place is training and retraining of your workers and making all the resources available to them. Linking reward structure. So this one and creating strategic encouraging policies is almost the same thing, but in this policy, you make it as part of the company that if you do this, you get this. But then linking reward structure to accomplishment of results is when, like they say, if you meet your target at the end of the month, you have a staff bonus, right? Making use of strategic leadership. So you already have leaders that are able to deliver and you make use of them. You already know them, people that are actually like, you know, if they are going to handle this project, the project is going to come out excellently well and be the best at, its, at the time it's supposed to be. Essential formula strategy. Strategies will fall if they are not properly implemented. The six features of strategy formulation and strategy implementation. Strategy formulation slash strategy implementation comparison charts, meaning strategy formulation. Strategy formulation refers to the preparation of a well thought strategy that helps in the achievement of organizational role. That's the formula. Strategy implementation. Strategy implementation means to bring the formula formulated strategy into action. So you've already thought of a plan here, that is strategy formula. You've already formulated the plan, you've thought of the plan, you have finally like scripted it on how it's going to go. Then strategy implementation means that you're bringing the formula. So this thing that you've already thought out, you've already planned, you're bringing it into execution. So number one is concept, placement of forces before action takes place. So you already, you know, um, in this plan, this is what we want to achieve. So you've already mapped out, this is the person that needs to be here. This is what we need to do. This is how many days we need to do this to be able to get this done. So you're already planning for it. Managing forces at the time of strategic execution. So after thinking it through, when it comes to the time for you to execute it, you manage those forces the way you've thought of, fully, you've thought of it. When you were planning, you manage it so that it can actually go in process in in the process and on progress. Let me throw my light on that a little bit. So I I had this strategy formulation that I was going to actually shoot about this week alone. I was about I was supposed to shoot about four videos, one for my normal abundance video, then three for theft that has to relate to the new minute apprenticeship program for 2022. Right, I already thought that, that in my brain, and I saw that it was going to work for me. But then, unfortunately, on the strategy implementation process, process, we had issue. Okay, meanwhile, I stay where I'm supposed to have access to 24 hours slide. So, because of that, I we don't have access to generator. So you, you don't say maybe when there is no light, you can go on on your generator. So then, our lights had issues for two days. So it helped, it made me not to be able to actually achieve all that I wanted to. But as at the time I'm shooting this video right now, I'm, uh, let's just say, 70% into achieving everything that I want because I've been able to successfully post about three of the videos and I'm supposed to be posting the fourth one, which if I don't get to do, as at the time I'm posting this video, I might be posting the fourth video I was supposed to post now or must have posted it before this video. Right? You must have had a concept of how you want to achieve something then in the implementation process try to manage the forces that you have to be able to achieve that. The process type logical. So when it's logical is you're just planning it in a paper or in a book or on your laptop but it's just not operational yet so then strategic implementation is operational now you're getting into action 
right? So you just like saying theory and practical, right? I'm sure you're getting that. Emphasize on effectiveness. Effectiveness. What is the strategy you're trying to put in place? Is it going to be effective? Then when you're putting it into implementation, emphasize on efficiency, right? Responsibility, top management, functional management. So top management can come up with the ideas, the best ideas to be able to get this done. But when you get to the field where you need to execute, you need functional people that is off and doing to be able to accomplish this goal for you. Orientation, planning. You're already planning it. When is a strategic formulation? Well, when you need to get to the field, all you need to do at this strategic implementation period is to execute. So you need to get to action. So it's just like planning and action. The activity type, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. So here you are thinking as an entrepreneur. Okay, this is what we need to do. But then when you get to the field, you have to be an administrative because you have to be an administrator, so it's administrative then. Requirement of analytical skill. For you to be able to be analyze, this is how we want this to be done. These are the, how many forces we need to get it done. This is the money we need to do. This is the time frame we need to do it. That is you being analytical. But then leadership skills will be required when you get to a position where you need to really execute this. I hope that explanation was Good enough for you to understand what they are trying to say there. Conceptualization of critical thinking and problem solving technology techniques. Conceptualization of critical thinking and problem solving techniques. What is critical thinking? Critical thinking is an intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating information gathered from and generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. In its exemplary form, it is based on universal intellectualization that Transit subject matter, subject matter division with clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, relevance, sound evidence, good reasons, depth, breadth, breadth, and firmness. They use the intellectual tools that, that critical thinking offers, concepts, and principles that enable them to analyze, assess, assess, improve thinking. They work diligently to develop the, the virtues of intellectual integrity, intellectual humanity, intellectual civ civility, intellectual empathy, intellectual sense of justice, and confidence in reasoning. Critical thinking is self-guided, self-disciplined think, self thinking which attempt to reason at the highest level of quality in a fair-minded fair way. Start stages and models that can stimulate your creative problem solving skill. Why is critical thinking important? Objective finding. Question. What bottleneck or bearer is this? What bottleneck or bearer is this? What is it that you wish to be better organized, right? That is the question. That's an objective question. What is it? What is the bottleneck of Biara is is like? What is the limit that the, the whole thing can go? What is it that you wish could be better organized? Fast finding question. Who should be or is already involved? Why does and what? does and what and does it happen so in a situation whereby you want this to achieve and you are thinking about the possibility the last possibilities of it happening so the next question is fast finding who should be or is already involved does it 
why does it or do, why doesn't it or why does it work you need to think critical in that area right then problem finding question what is the actual problem what is the key objectives what is the problem you're actually thinking critically that you want to solve now that is the next question what is the worst case and the first one is what is the worst case scenario if you do this what is the father you cannot get into it who is the person that is actually in charge in this matter what is actually the problem they were trying to solve then i got finding is this a say it is essential to investigate brainstorm and determine as many prob probable solution as you can so this is where you need a teamwork so if you have your team it's easier for you to actually brainstorm and think out loud and trying to work around the problem and trying to find solutions accepting findings the call for action that you put out should be comprehended by all associated with the problem solving process so that if it becomes an accepted solution why is critical thinking important in business business leaders take major action every day from hiring and firing to review financial earning reports participating in board meeting and handling public relation relation crisis these are the price the precise area in which critical thinking comes into play as business leader use this skill to make tough decisions such as letting an employee go or issuing a press release when scandal threatening to tarnish a company's reputation okay, of course if you're in Nigeria, you know that a lot of things are happening with companies now. Uh, sometimes, that's why sometimes it's not really good. It's not okay for you to just hear or read anything on social media and just believe it completely. It could be some people out there, maybe they're competitors, trying very well, every possible mix to tarnish their reputation and to bring them down. Right? So in a situation like this, why critical thinking is important is in businesses, but when it comes to employment is okay to actually let that staff go in as much as you want to be a good leader and all that does not mean that if somebody is not being effective in, in your business and not helping your business go that you shouldn't let the person go you really need after you've given the person chance to grow and the person is clearly not going to grow and is not making any important and positive impact in your company it's good to let the person go um, to do a press release when your company is going through a crisis is actually important. I know that might not be the best thing, but no, that might not be the best thing you want to do at that moment. But it's something you actually need to do. Improve communication strategies. Communicating with different type of people require defining the needs of the target audience, which demand critical thinking. For example. If a company is being bought out by a competitor, the CEO must consider how this will impact everyone from low level employee to investor and determine what message to convey to each party. Acting quickly is essential as he or she should be the first to give the employee the news to maintain their trust. Right? So things happen. That is why one of the reasons why sometimes it's good for you to do a press release so a situation is out there on ramp page people having a fair a, fair, a false news yeah that is not the best time you might want to keep quiet because you need to actually come out to redeem yourself you need to so a situation just like you say things are going bad in the company it's best you gather the morale to actually call your employees and tell them okay this is the situation of things right now this is what is going on because it's best for them if they hear it from you your level of the level of trust and respect they have for you will increase and you retain trust with them characteristics and skills of critical thinkers about whatever thing his name is i cannot pronounce henry ford maria crisi sagmu freud these are just a few of the critical thinkers who have shaped our modern lives critical thinkers think clearly and rationally and make logical connection between ideas they are critical 
they are crucial to exploring and understanding the world we live in. There are six major obstacles to creative thinking that could be preventing you from learning how to improve your problem solving skill for your business success. If you fail to recognize any of them, they could be holding you back. They are lack of direction from yourself or others. If you don't have direction in life, I mean, everything that comes into your mind goes. You just want to, but if you have um, a direction in life, if thoughts that come that is not in line with you achieving that direction and moving forward in that direction that you've envisioned for yourself, you have to let it go because you have a focus in life. Being afraid of failure. That's why some of us are risk takers. We take risk a lot, but calculative risk, like I said before. So if you're the type of that you're afraid to fail, you cannot think critically. You just want, yeah, a lot of them think critically too, but in a negative way. They just think about, about what might go wrong at any time. Being afraid of rejection. Never changing or adapting to the situation. Not thinking proactively. If you have, if your characteristics of critical thinkers, if you're hoping to reach your full potential and make your mark on in the world, on the world, cultivate the following characteristics of critical thinkers. They include observation. We are very observant. Curiosity. Oh my God! I want to know everything, Sha. Objectivity, introspect, introspectation, introspection, analytical, analytical thinking, identifying biases, determining relevance. I, I determine what is relevant for me, though. I don't just go with the flow. In, in, inference. Willing to challenge the situ the status quo. Oh, I did that a lot. Open mindedness, effective communicators, active listeners. The part of listening, Sha. We'll get to that. Leading with innovation and and change. In today's in today's constantly changing world. Change and innovation plays an extremely important role in the survival of the organization. New technologies like faster software and hardware and improved manufacturing system are increasing production and changing the way we do business across the globe. The first element is how an organization can change successfully, which consists of the steps that are needed and the process that makes change happen. Guiding principles. As this organization become larger and larger, there is need for strategy and structural, structural change as well as cultural changes. These two elements often go hand in hand and can be some of the most difficult to change. Guiding principle for change. To successfully implement a change or adapt to change key. To adapt to changes, key guiding principles are crucial. They are lead with the culture. Start at the top. Involve every layer. Make the rational and emotional case together. Act your way into new thinking. Engage, engage, and engage. Lead outside the lane so sometimes it's good to just deviate and just do something differently break the rules if you need to as long as you achieve the goal leverage former former solutions leverage informal solutions so that's breaking the rules sometimes so you might just do what you need to do as long as you get the result done in a positive way though assess and adapt conclusion there is no single best way to lead, and there is substantial repeat, rep, repetitive advice offered by vast armies of leadership consultants. In the end, however, each leader must 
must develop his or her own style based upon value, experiences, and mission for formulate leadership skill that build on the foundation of his or her existing strength. What skills should a leader concentrate on developing? In an article eliminating the common, common leadership traits that creates lawyer employees, Megan Byron named Telling the Truth. Tell your company the truth at your workers the truth at all times. You don't need to lie to them. Even if they are your kids too, you don't need to. Clearly communicating roles and responsibilities. Set the roles. Tell this person this is what you're supposed to be doing and this is what you're supposed to be doing. Make it very clear so that everybody can actually know their responsibilities and their and their roles and they can actually work effectively on that again. Creating a workplace culture that value real people relationship. And it starts with you. I mean, they said um, from my lecture, from my facilitator, he said that you actually have an inward customer and an outward customer. And your inward customers are your employees and your workers. Are they happy? Because it's only when they are happy that they can serve your client, which is your outside customer, in a happy way. So you need to make them happy. You need to have a favorable policy that works for them too, that gives, that makes them happy. There should be something they're also benefiting from working for you and not just making it about you and your company. Let them be happy to work for you, right? Be Being fair and open. Be fair and open, but know the limits. They didn't say you should go and bring yourself down where your workers will start disrespecting you or will not be effective to do their work. Modeling the behavior you seek in others. So meaning that if you respect the manager and the top, respect that cleaner. It's good to ask them about their family from time to time. Trying to find out how they are doing. Trying to check up on them. That will make a difference in their life, right? So I don't want to say much on this because we've covered a whole lot of time already. So thank you very much for listening to this and watching this again. And here I have to sign out. See you in my next video. Bye.